here is a good example of why good example of why electrical code forbids us to put a ground rod on the other end of the house and ground the radio to it. I'm listening on 3526 bottom of 80 meters. S3, 4, 5, 3, 6. That's distant lightning noise. That's not bad for 80. If we listen for a while, what happens? See the impulse noise spiking way up. Up to S9. See the staticky, almost sparking sound. <laughs> Hear the static. Suddenly S8 and up. Well, outside, the ground is so dry. It's powder. It's clay soil. It's extreme dry here. That leads to static discharge. But, and this is on a dipole. 80 meter dipole, 20 gauge wire. The wire, there it goes, full static. I can't hear nothing. The dipole wire is insulated, high voltage insulation. The wire is touching nothing except pieces of 550 paracord that are tied to trees. Now, see, that's full S9 static. I can't hear any signals because the static, which is not lightning static at the distance, it's local noise, is tearing the band up. I'm going to take the coax off the radio and show you something neat. Okay, there's the old coax. <clears throat> Center conductor and shield both go to antenna wires. Antenna wires are not grounded. They're only touching paracord. Watch what happens when I take the shield of the coax and touch the key. It's going to ground. Watch what happens when the center pin touches. It's going to ground. How can it be? The antenna ain't grounded. Well, take a look at this. Voltmeter. Shield of the coax. AC volts to the key. Forty seven point eight volts AC. On the center conductor of the transmission line, which is the other antenna wire, 48.2 volts AC. On AC current, center conductor of the transmission line, 375 microamp. On the shield of the coax, 106 microamp. We might think the noise voltage and current on the shield would be higher, but it isn't. So that suggests it's something to do with the wire that's connected to the center of the, trans of the transmission line at the antenna socket. But there's a significant current between the two. That current is why National Electric Code forbids us, forbids us to put a ground rod at the other end of the house and ground our radio and antenna to it. Because there are voltage drops across the ground, there's currents out there, and those two rods are not at the same potential. The service entrance ground and the ground rod that AMS have been BS'd and lied to that they think they need for their antenna. There's nothing in code whatsoever about grounding for lightning. Nothing in code about grounding antennas does not exist. Electrical system grounding is not for lightning. It's for protecting against power line transients and faults. 
with realized top of that electric pole is at 7 to 13 kV. Dangerous. So, this goes to show why the code says you may not install additional ground rods at the load under any circumstance. Article 250.24A5 forbids regrounding at the load. Ground rods must be close enough together to be bonded, and that's no more than 8 feet. And only a fool puts his radio shack at the service entrance. Now if that coax was grounded to earth ground, I connect that to the radio, and it finds a path back to that AC outlet, which it will. That makes a second ground on the ground conductor in your building and shorts out the protection of the ground fault interrupters because the GFIs are looking for current going down that ground wire back to the breaker box. And by putting in that illegal ground rod, you have diverted that fault current to the ground rod outside and GFI doesn't go off. Code says no, no means no. No, two letters, very simple word. N-O, it means Nick 9 no. I'm going to make it very simple for you. If you're so bloody ignorant, you can't see that grounding an antenna turns it into a lightning rod and is just begging for lightning to hit it, you got no business being an amateur radio. Get out of it. Hate BYP.